Welcome to Info Live TV. I'm Donna Rudolph. Here's the news. The Parliamentary Assembly of the Mediterranean called for Hamas to accept the Quartet's three conditions for recognizing the Islamist movement, renunciation of violence, recognition of Israel, and accepting the agreement signed in the past by Israel and the PLO. All of the countries attending the meeting in Croatia, including Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria as well as the Palestinian Authority, voted in favor of the resolution. The Assembly, which has 23 member states and aims to foster cooperation among Mediterranean countries, also called for a return to Israeli-Palestinian negotiations and an end to the conflict. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said in an interview that if Israel, the United States and Europe do not want the Palestinians to seek unilateral recognition in the United Nations, then they must present an alternative. Abbas stressed that in the absence of peace talks with Israel, the Palestinian leadership will turn to the United Nations in September. Abbas also said that Salam Fayyad will serve as the Prime Minister of a future transition government with Hamas despite the Gaza ruler's objections. U.S. President Barack Obama had repeatedly urged the Palestinians to refrain from appealing to the U.N. for the statehood and instead negotiate with Israel. Obama stressed that the U.N. will not be able to deliver a Palestinian state and only peace talks with Israel can lead to statehood. Defense Minister Ehud Barak met with the U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates at the Pentagon and discussed with him kidnapped soldier Gilad Shalit. During the meeting, Barak raised the issue of kidnapped IDF soldier Gilad Shalit. Barak told Gates that there was no humanitarian crisis in Gaza, there is no famine in Gaza, and a million and a half people are living in Gaza, but only one of them is really in need of humanitarian aid, and that person is Gilad Shalit. Barak added that Shalit had now been held by Hamas for some four years, in violation of all international conventions and agreements. He also told Gates there was immediate importance to the blockade on the Strip. That stance garnered U.S. praise of Israel earlier Monday, with the White House saying in a statement that it welcomed the new policy towards Gaza announced by the government of Israel, which responds to the calls of many in the international community. Professor Morris Pollard was laid to rest Monday and denied the privilege of having his son Jonathan present to recite the Kaddish, the traditional Jewish prayer for the dead over the grave. Jonathan Pollard sat grieving for his father in his jail cell instead, his mother already having died, also without his presence to comfort her in her final hours. Despite thousands of phone calls that flooded the White House switchboard, an appeal to the U.S. State Department by Israeli Ambassador Michael Oren, and pleased by dozens of Israeli lawmakers, the Obama administration refused to allow Pollard to attend his father's funeral. Pollard's 95-year-old father was an award-winning microbiologist at the University of Notre Dame for half a century. His service to the country did not help him, however, when it came to ask the authorities for a final visit with his son shortly before his death in South Bend, Indiana. Imprisoned for more than 25 years for having passed classified information to Israel, an American ally, about terrorist activity, Pollard's sentence is seen by many as strangely harsh. He was sentenced to life in prison on one charge of passing classified information to a friendly nation, a crime that generally is punished with a two to four year prison term. Danny Rosen, life partner to Haifa Police Commander Ahuva Tomer, who died in the Carmel Fire back in December, addressed the state comptroller, Michal Linder Strauss's pending report against the most senior officials in the government. Rosen stated, I demand that Interior Minister Eli Yishai resign, and I also demand that Netanyahu use his power to remove him from office. Rosen remarked that he hopes the public will continue to condemn him and not allow him to seek refuge and continue to serve as a minister in the state of Israel. I'm Donna Rudolph. Thank you for joining us. See you tomorrow.